can the assessors justify there being any value to that land at all if nothing was paid for? Uh, I think it's very hard to justify that. So to me, it doesn't go back to the tax rolls. That's my, my problem. But, you know, I hear what you're saying. I think, we ought, I think we ought to inquire because we really put that property up to aid citizens. And how come nobody bought it? It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. Yes, Mr. Yes, um, I, I, I have no problem with putting it on until next year because we did have a process and uh, evidently nobody was interested and uh, I, I certainly am not going to give the land away just to get it put back on the tax roll. So I'd be interested to know what happened to Mr. Frothingale. I mean, I can assume he knew about it, but maybe maybe he just is not interested. Um, I'm, I'm probably not going to be in favor of lowering the, that, that, that minimum price, but whatever the board decides is a majority. I, Certainly will well, bye bye, but I, I'd like to just make it. I'm not going to give it away. Come back to the board. Yeah, I'm not going to give it away. I find out. I think it's worthwhile asking the question of why, yeah. and then we can proceed with the next step. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, board members. Uh, just a couple of other um, catch-up items. I'm informed that the uh, site paving at the police and fire station will be taking place this Friday. So that's the date for the uh, site to be paved. And upon completion of the paving, I'm expecting that uh, we will, will um, be moving our police and fire mechanic back to the building forthwith. As you know, we've been out at uh, Ipswich River Park. And at this time, the uh, appropriate place for him to be is in, in the uh, basement of the fire, police and fire station where he's been for years, and we fully intend to begin that action. So as soon as the site is done, We'll, uh, we'll begin that process. We'll uh, um, relocate the mechanic back to the police and fire station. So. And then uh, just one um, final note is I had an opportunity to attend a meeting in uh, Lowell on Friday afternoon. Uh, Lieutenant Governor Murray was there. It was a uh, meeting of his cabinet offices. And they uh, had invited in a bunch of municipal officials from the area to tell them what they could do better. And, uh, it was a two-hour meeting, and it really, I think it went pretty well. But the issues that seemed to uh, to be central to the entire discussion was uh, sufficient funding for a special education and fully funding the special education circuit breaker, where is uh, other communities are in a similar situation to this town with uh, funding for special education and legal obligations to do so, and the budgetary reality is that there is a, you know, a finite amount of funds that are available for that purpose. Um, the other items that were brought up were related to the GIC, the Group Insurance Commission, and whether the uh, administration would uh, structure the GIC program so that it was similar to the way it's structured on the state level, which is the uh, uh, state decides what's appropriate, and that's the what's provided to the uh, uh, union <coughs> membership. And uh, um, so those are really the two, the two items that I took from the meeting that were uh, most uh, sufficient. Uh, other communities are struggling with uh, public pension costs, similar to us, and uh, I think he left with an idea, and we feel the governor left with an idea that uh, cities and towns face some unique challenges right now um, with regard to funding their budget and funding their services in the adequate level. So, that concludes my report. No, no feedback on what they're doing. <coughs> uh, I think they're just at the point of, the, of listening to see if there's common themes, and uh, the special education has been a common theme, the Group Insurance Commission has been a common theme, and other communities that they've gone to. Uh, they certainly heard the With same. all the press and, dis press and discussion over the past two years, you would think they didn't need to do that to pull those three out of the list. Can okay. yeah. I ask a question? Phone? We have, we have uh, times, uh, deliverable dates for on the phones for the, the, uh, the town hall? Um, if you ask me, I'll tell you this week. Okay. That's my, my plan is that this is supposed to begin the installation of the phones here at town hall this week. Okay. Um, I have no reason to believe that that's not going to happen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but there have been, uh, yeah. been a number of dates that have gone back and forth. Know. And they've been um, doing it on an incremental basis with the fire station being phase two and the town hall being phase three. So, uh, 
Well, I mean, is it, is, I, I mean, is your recommendation we be patient, or should we, is there some fire we can light under these people to get this done, I mean, or we should be patient? Well, it, I will say it, that. It seems like we've been patient. Well, not, not yeah. all the problems are the problem yeah. of the uh, people that provide us with the phone equipment. Uh -huh. Some of the issues relate to uh, ability to get dial tone here in this building uh, and services that are provided by Verizon. And uh, it's just been a struggle to be able to coordinate that. And no one is to blame. It's just that the, it's, uh, it's not an area where they're all, that's high on the priority list of, uh, of the uh, big corporations. Well, especially where they're not really putting in the T1 line. Right. So it's, the T1 line is yeah. being provided by a, another vendor and it's yeah. coming in on Verizon's copper. Right. So they'd be the issue. But this week would be nice. Yeah. Anything else for you? Uh, for the new business. Yeah, first of all, uh, I want to congratulate Lieutenant Hayes on his retirement. Unfortunately, I uh, had a family situation where I wasn't able to, uh, to attend the, uh, the gathering at the police station for him. But uh, uh, Eddie Hayes has uh, served the community long and well and uh, wish him the best of a long and happy and healthy retirement. Uh, he and his family and the uh, I guess he's into pasta these days, so I'll have to go up and try the restaurant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, no, but uh, again, to Lieutenant Hayes and his family, uh, congratulations on a uh, well-deserved retirement, and uh, I thank you very much for his service to the community over 30, whatever he is, 36 years or so. Uh, in relation to the police department, and we have the appointments tonight, I was very close. What is the timetable for the assessment centers on the chief's uh, Positions. We'll be setting up meetings to uh, to interview the can the consultants, and that process will be completed this month. And we'll have a selection um, with a firm ready to go to begin the process, the interview process during the month of December. So after the first of January. January, appointments in January. Yes. So even that wouldn't interfere with. I don't know the police department, the, the civil service list that's in existence is good for at least another year. I don't know what it is on the fire department side, you know, for promotional opportunities. Um, Are we going to run into any timelines in relation to firefighters having to take tests for March promotion afterwards, or do we have existing lists which um, will survive the year? The fire department, there will be a uh, promotional exam for captain. Uh, we have one. We have two acting positions, and I say acting with a small a because sometimes people are offended that I don't use the right term of provisional or acting, but we have two um, acting positions. One is the chief, which will be handled through the assessment center. The second is a, a captain's position. The, um, there are no further candidates on the last captain's list, so that has expired. And there's a new examination that will be given um, this month. So in the middle part of November, there's another examination that will be given. And then we will expect that there will be a new captain's list that will be created by Human Resources. Be available sometime in the frame, time frame of about March of 2008. And at that time, we'll be able to make a permanent captain's appointment from that list. And they're all studying now. So, so we'll we don't have any short notice for all this. <laughs> no, they've, been, they've known for, they've for a long time. For a while. So contract. And we've, we've requisitioned for that exam, and we're in line for it. And um, as Michael mentioned, is that everyone is studying for it. So that will be the, the final <coughs> appointment that needs to take place in the division of the chief in that department. On the, uh, the police side, um, <coughs> the, the most recent uh, list that we have that we appointed uh, Lieutenant Brandon and Sergeant Murphy from will not be expiring for approximately two more years. So um, what the next step will be is that we will uh, be requisitioning HRD for um, a acting captain and a act, excuse me, acting lieutenant and an acting sergeant position. And we will be proceeding with uh, making acting appointments. Those are due to the fact that uh, until the chief is permanently appointed, 
we are obligated to make uh, acting appointments. And so what we will be doing is we'll be receiving a list which will have uh, more or less the same candidates that we talked um, as a result of the most recent round. We'll make those two acting appointments. And I'm anticipating that uh, certainly within the time frame I've described to you that we will be able to make permanent appointments from the existing um, lieutenant and existing uh, sergeants list before those lists would be expiring. Yeah. The, the final step would be then um, two last positions, which would be patrolmen, and those would be um, replacing the individuals who retired within the last um, six months. That would be uh, uh, former Chief Pernown and former Chief uh, Lieutenant uh, Hayes. Uh, we've made a requisition, and we've received names of uh, individuals to appoint as uh, uh, patrolmen. And we're proceeding and ready to make those appointments. Right track. Okay, that's good. Excuse me. Sure. Uh, Regarding that, or? Oh, no. Well, no. Well, no I, if C was done, that, could could we let Mr. Pierce know what, what we did on his land? He oh, came in. Oh, yeah. Oh. Was, you know, rather than keep him here. Sure. <laughs> Basically, uh, we are wait, uh, we're waiting now for uh, town council to review that agreement. Okay. So we haven't taken any action. Because we, we haven't will. heard from them. We will take action at our next meeting, assuming that we will get uh, feedback from town council. Okay. So we've asked them to review the agreement that you presented. Okay. And you got the copies of the other ones that we sent in, so yep. you can see that everybody else, in fact, is That's on board with it. Right. So. That's being provided to the town council. Yes. <coughs> That's what the board reviewed tonight, Warren. Was right. those two, two agreements? Yeah. And basically, it's just an access, you know, a, a, an access. So we do just so you know we that this project you know we've been working on for, for quite a while and basically it's it's uh, the whole the finishing of the project the purchase of sale all the stuff hanging on getting this finally finished off which actually was the seller's responsibility initially didn't follow through on it so we trying to get it straight away okay, okay. thank you. Mr. Yeah, I just have one other matter uh, regarding the, uh, the, the Route 62 project. Uh, I see a flurry of activity uh, in the last week or so. Apparently it must be coming close to the end here where I see that they're addressing the ADA issues in relation to the, the curb cuts and those types of things. Uh, I still haven't seen, none of us have seen, any activity in relation to utility poles that are in the middle of the sidewalks, which uh, we were assured and promised would be addressed and taken care of. I don't know yet what uh, where the responsibility lies and whether funds uh, are still going to be held until those things are, uh, are taken care of, those issues are taken care of. But, uh, just between the bottom of Oakdale Road and, and, uh, and St. Teresa's Church, going to be a dozen telephone poles that are pretty close to smack dab in the middle of the sidewalk and can't possibly make those sidewalks ADA compliant. And can, two, three years ago, uh, there were assurances that those utilities would be moved and access would be free and clear on those sidewalks. And it's still to this day yet to be addressed. And we have some nice finished sidewalks all around them. Right. So I, just, I don't want the, the issue to be dropped or lost. General contractor has some culpability or responsibility here. They should be held. The feet should be held to the fire. And if it's the local utilities, the okay, running municipal light, blowing the poles. I think we. I think it's the town that raised the issues with the ADA to the state, who is responsible. Uh, back to the contractor. This was this was this was in the infancy stages. It was raised by the town because as they first laid it out. Those were the right. <coughs> Well, I know that, uh, I know that uh, Mike has been working the punch list down on that because it's not the big thing. Okay. But I'm not so sure these are still on the punch list or not. I, I don't oh. know. Uh, I don't I'll see Dave it. Hanlon tomorrow morning. Uh, yeah. Another issue I'll ask him. From that, I'll send Mr. Kim. Thank you. Michael? Uh, I'd just like to join Mr. O'Leary for graduating. Uh, Ted Hayes on a long career. And uh, congratulate uh, Sergeant Murphy and Lieutenant Brennan on their promotions. Thank you. 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 Th
and um, on Halloween night, actually, we had a water 